Well, hello, and welcome back to another uh, episode in our series of uh, Chairman's Chat with the Western Caucus. Today, I've got the honor of having two very special guests, two friends and colleagues from the state of California, David Valadeo and Ken Calvert. Welcome, guys. Appreciate you being here with me. Thanks for having us. Great to be here, Dan. Absolutely. So today, I want to talk about something that's critical. You know, we, we all represent districts in the western part of the United States, and that seems to be in the news all over it, because of the smoke, the fires, it's dry, record droughts in your state and my state all across the West. So, so water has always been a critical issue in the Western part of the United States. And as our populations grow, as demands for water continue to grow, um, and other, other factors that impact the ability for us to be able to store and utilize water, all these different factions are, are playing into this equation we seem to be coming out on the short end of the stick, those, those of us that need water in, in our dry districts. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the issues you're facing, particularly in California. We in Washington are experiencing some of the same things, but certainly in California, um, this has been a, I, I, I've heard about the California water wars for years. It's a very complex, I think you made that comment, Ken, it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things happening there, but, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what you're doing, what some of the, some of the solutions that you've been able to uh, focus on and point to that we could be working towards to alleviate some of these problems to get, you know, get the supply and demand of water, that precious resource that we all need, back into balance so that we can continue to thrive. So there's been some le legislation. I think you both together uh, have been working on. Uh, David, you were one of the prime sponsors of something we call the Need Water Act. So Tell me a little bit about that or any other thoughts you've got about that. Water so the Need Water Act is a really, really uh, small, specific piece of legislation. Uh, it's specific to this point in time. It actually expires once the drought, uh, emergency drought declaration is over. Um, but it, it essentially helps us survive this a little bit better. I mean, obviously we can't make it rain. Uh, we can't fill up the reservoirs magically by passing legislation, but we can get a little bit smarter about how we allow water transfers, how we manage water moving through the Delta, and so it, it offers us a little more flexibility there. And uh, that is something I'm hearing about quite a bit in the district. I've got a little, uh, couple small cities, communities in my district that are about to run out of water and allowing them the opportunity to transfer water a little bit easier would uh, alleviate some of their pain. I've also got a lot of farmers with crops on the ground uh, who are calling me pretty regularly, uh, trying to purchase water, trying to transfer water, but they're being held up with some of the departments. And so streamlining that process would help them have water to continue to grow those crops that obviously the American consumers uh, consume. So, and I'm not saying this because I know it to be true, but is, is, a, is there some truth to the statement that there, the water is there, we just need to manage it in a better way or utilize you know, some kind of strategy to, to make sure everybody gets some share of the water? So obviously we're in a drier environment. I mean, there is a drought going on, but our infrastructure has been, has been built and designed over the years to be able to withstand the type of environment that we're in today. Uh, the problem is, is we don't manage the resources like we should. Water is uh, being wasted in a lot of reasons or a lot of, the, a lot of times for bad reasoning, uh, bad science. And that's why the biological opinion cited uh, by President Trump in February 2020 would help us uh, manage water resources a little bit better. Obviously, uh, increasing infrastructure would be great and uh, making sure that we are able to capture more of the water resources and use that more wisely would benefit, benefit us quite a bit because the population changes, obviously usage changes over the last few decades. All those things play a role, but really it's just mostly about management. You mentioned infrastructure. Ken, I know you've been really engaged on uh, some, of the, some of the efforts to um, maintain and update our infrastructure, which in some cases I know up in Washington is pushing 100 years old or more. Uh, could you talk about some of your work there? Sure. You know, our predecessors did a wonderful job of putting together a system uh, for us in California. Most of California is a desert. And so the only way we could have production agriculture and fruits and vegetables is to produce uh, more water. And so we set up this system uh, in California to send water from the north to the south where, where the water is. And uh, we never completed it. We need mm -hmm. to raise Shasta. Shasta is actually designed to go quite a bit higher than the 18 feet we'd like to, to raise it up. Uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility. It's all approved, it's ready to go. It's uh, 
shovel ready, as they say. Mm -hmm. And uh, all we need is the federal government to step up and uh, put its federal share in. So we need to do to do that. We need to expand Las Pescaros. We need to build the sites reservoir, which uh, most all the permitting has been completed. Actually, all the pre-construction work has been done. We need to start that. Uh, we need to eventually build the Bryant Kern Reservoir. So we had those all in place. And if we managed the pumps properly, uh, we wouldn't have a problem right now. We would have significant storage uh, that, would, that would carry us through the bad years. I mean, you know, we, we have to have storage. Uh, there are those who are opposed to storage, and uh, not most people. Most people think it's good sense. But there are some environmental groups that just oppose uh, any kind of water delivery or storage because they believe it's a growth inducement or some other reason. But uh, those are not good reasons as far as I'm concerned for the people of California. Um, and there's a lot of competing uses for that water, too. It's not all, not everybody that... Uh, support storage wants to see it go to the farms, right? Right. Like for instance, Shasta, it gives us it gives us options to put cold water when it's needed down mm -hmm. through the system. Right now, they're basically the young salmon are cooking in the you know in the river system uh, below Shasta. Well, if we had that cold water pool right now, uh, we would have a different outcome. We'd have a win-win situation. We'd have water for fish and water for people. So, as I said, currently. West is on fire. Uh, looks like it's going to be a really bad uh, wildfire season. I know in the state of Washington, we are uh, multiple acres ahead of where we were a year ago as far as what's on what's burning. Uh, if that makes sense, the, the fire season started early, and it looks like it's going to be a long, long. Pretty much year round. Now. It, it is. Um, so, any of these efforts, the work that you guys have been talking about. Uh, would that have a positive impact on mitigating wildfires or reducing the dangers? Or, or well, what's, in the, what's the relationship? In the Interior Appropriation Bill, uh, in years past, our former colleague who just passed away, Jerry Lewis, yeah. uh, was able to get a significant amount of money to do forest management, which is what we should be doing. We used to do prescriptive burns, uh, manage the floor of the forest where we didn't have overpopulation of trees. If you look at pictures of 100 years ago, you'll see that the forests look entirely different. They're over too many trees, and so that depletes the water table. That causes disease in the trees. They get the bark beetle, they get other diseases. Trees die, and then uh, all of a sudden, they're just ready to be ignited at a lightning strike or, or an arson strike or whatever. And so, for instance, in California last year, I think we had 8 million acres go up in, in smoke. Really? Wow. Which uh, shouldn't have happened. If we managed our forest properly, uh, we uh, we would have a different outcome. And Ken made a, a great point. When we look at managing the forest better, it actually helps us on the water situation. The tree pressure, because of the number of trees, they obviously uh, are stressed in a drier year like now, and so it creates a problem for the forest uh, with vulnerable trees because they they're more susceptible to bark beetle and the fire situation. But as on the water side, if you don't have uh, overpopulation of trees, it actually allows uh, excess water to flow down and help us on the reservoir front uh, with all the trees absorbing up all the water out of the ground. There, there is pressure there, and, that, and it does have a it does have an impact on moisture content in the soil and the ability for water to continue to flow. That makes sense. So healthy forests help the water situation throughout the desert valleys, right? Right. Absolutely. So any other comments you'd like to make on the overall water situation in California and where we're headed? What do you what do you see this session or into the future? What we can well, I just want to make a point. I mean, we uh, we see the water coming down every year in the spring from the spring melt. Yeah. And uh, we're not managing the, the pumps properly. I mean, when we had a, a great year a few years ago and we were pumping, we, we had a diminutive loss on Delta Spine. I think we lost five. And this year we could have pumped more water and put more water uh, down south in some of the reservoirs. Uh, and with little or a very small amount of environmental problem. But there are those who are stopping us from doing that. So we just look at the water going down underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, leave the state of California mm -hmm. with no benefit, zero. And why this is important for everyone outside of California and outside of Washington and outside of the West is we grow a lot of the fruits and vegetables yeah. that 
uh, are exported uh, around the country and the world. And so obviously this can have an impact on uh, prices of food for folks at home. And so it's important that people are engaged in this. For my district, obviously agriculture is a big deal in both of our districts, but also uh, this is affecting people at their homes. I've literally got communities who are looking to run out of water and won't have water in their homes to, to bathe, to cook, uh, just normal everyday activities. And so this is a scary time for those folks. Yeah, critical time. As David points out, when people go to the market and they see the price of produce skyrocketing, along with everything else that's being inflated, you know, you can blame uh, the water policies in California because a significant part of the fruits and vegetables and nuts and throughout the United States come from the state of California. Yeah, they do. Every single day, each of us eats something from California, that's right, yes. And or drink something. Maybe milk, maybe wine. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll, yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, I just can't tell you how delighted I am to be able to talk with you a little bit about this important subject. I, as chairman of the Western Caucus, I look forward to working with you on, on these crucial, urgent issues. And uh, hopefully we can make some positive progress in the very near future. So I want to thank you for being with me. And thank you for being part of Chairman's Chat. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.